Michael Store from Resalt. And here's another um, balcony video, again with my whiteboard. And um, I will try my best to improve my whiteboard skills. Um, this video, I want to talk about what's going on between the reader and the chip and how often is the reader actually talking to a chip and um, what do I mean when I talk about collisions. So what's important to understand is that if you look at our current decoder hardware, it actually has um, multiple ports, okay? Let's see, uh, let's do another two, then we have eight ports. So we have a eight port reader in there, okay? Now what's important to understand is that every single port is connected to a switch. So that switch can only connect to one single port at a time. So this switch is basically flipping from this position into this position, into this position, into this position, into this position and so forth. So at any given time, only one of the antenna ports is actually doing something. Okay, it's really important to understand. So if you connect two antennas on both sides, as I explained in my last video, actually what happens if you, let's say, if you only had two antennas connected, the reader would be switching back and forth between those two antennas, only using one antenna at a time. So in our case, this switching happens about 40 times per second when there are no chips in range. Okay, it's important to understand. So 40 times per second, the reader will be switching back and forth. And there's actually no real possibility to, to speed it up because um, it takes some time to do the air protocol. The UHF Gen 2 air protocol takes time to look for chips and um, you can't really speed this up more than the 40 times per second. So now what happens is if a reader sees a chip, if there's communication going on to a chip, what then happens is that the reader will have to talk to that chip. It will have to get the ID from that chip. And this is actually a multi-stage um, operation going on. So it's not a single command, it's actually at least two, and uh, it takes time. So as soon as there is a chip or even multiple chips, this rate goes down, okay? So for everything that we've been talking so far, the important thing to understand is that, let's say you have um, a road again and you have your mat with, let's say, your, your eight antenna elements, okay? Only one of those antenna elements, oh, I have to do this right, only one of those antenna elements will be on at any given time. And the time it takes to switch through the antenna elements is dependent on the count of chips which are in range. So if you have many chips in range, you get much lesser chances to capture a single tag coming across an antenna. Let's say you have an, a chip crossing over here. Typically what happens is that you get that chip on three antennas. So let's say those three antennas from here to here capture this chip, okay? Now, if they are switching through 40 times per second, um, it's not really a big deal, even if this chip is fast. But if there are many chips everywhere, and um, this chip is fast, you don't have a lot of time to capture the tag. So here it is important to understand that everything that we're talking about, there is a huge difference between having many chips in the field and having a low count of chips in the field. And all the detection rates and everything that I say here are only referring to examples where you have many chips in the field. Now, if you look at the hit counts that we have in our decoders, you can actually see that because what you typically find is that we have a lot more hits at the finish line than we have at the start. Because at the start, um, you have many more chips on the antenna and you have bodies blocking the signal from each other. So you have a small time to see the chip because you only get a very small air time to communicate to the chip when there is a direct line of sight between the antenna and the chip. And you have many chips, so the antenna doesn't get its turn very often. And 
That is why at the start you have a lot less hits than you have at the finish line. Still, at normal start situations, even in very dense and quick start um, situations, we have, um, I would say, at least a handful hits per chip in any case. Uh, I would say normally everything above 10 hits is absolutely sufficient, um, but at the finish line you can have pl easily have 100 hits. Okay. Now the issue is when you get close to one hit, because if you only have one hit left, if you don't get that, uh, you won't be reading the chip at all. Okay. So that's really important to understand. And um, that last hit, if you don't get that because of a collision of two readers, switching, unfortunately switching to two colliding antennas at the unfortunate time, then you will miss a transponder totally. So um, that's a very important thing to understand. Okay, every single port of a decoder is only switched on by itself. It's switched on 40 times per second, and it, the rate of switching through the antennas depends on how many chips there are. And um, the detection rate at the end is only limited by all of this when you're very close to one single hit per chip, and when you then have collisions between multiple readers, be it because they're on the same frequency or be it because of a bad antenna setup. So I hope um, this helps a little bit to understand better what's going on and uh, see you next time.